<laughs> My name is Rick Abel. I'm the Barton Community College Theater uh, director, instructor, and so forth and so on. Everything. Uh, I want to tell you a little something about what you're going to see tonight and a few things as well. Uh, this whole thing started oh, back in September, I think. And uh, uh, we've never done this before. Uh, this is where we've sent out a call to the Barton Community College community, service community. I mentioned that there's going to be four short plays tonight. Welcome to Barton Theater. Welcome to our four original plays. <coughs> Good morning and welcome to Buy, Sell, and Trade, the show with more bargains per square minute than any other show of its type. The show that's got more bargains than Wisconsin has types of cheese. Remember our rules on the show? Just one call per day, a limit of three items per call, no commercial businesses acting like they're not really businesses, and no cussing. And this daily extravaganza is brought to you today by Ronnie's Retail at Main and Pine here in the Metroplex, where owning your home, home is not a dream, it's a retail reality. Get it? Of course you do. I've been saying it for five years. And it's also presented today by Nick's Pawn Shop and Artistic Tattoo Parlor, where you can sell your old fossil watch and use the money to get a new look just a few feet away. Okay, give me a call at 920-2121, the number for fun and money, as in money. Okay, we got one. Good morning, BS and he. Oh, baby, you're on fire this morning, Jay. How are you doing? Hey, Stacy, doing good. If I was any better, I'd have to be two people. How about you, lady? For a Monday, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, tell me about it. Big fun weekend, huh? Oh, big and dull. I had to work my way up from being comatose to merely being bored. Well, I'm not going to bother you with my problems. I got a double recliner for sale. One of those fuzzy finish lazy boys. Fuzzy finish? You know, microfiber. It's kind of soft and it doesn't make you sweat like leather. It's sort of a mauve color, a deep rosy red. It would go good with anything in the room color-wise. Color I only want a hundred bucks. Just has one problem. A problem? Like what? Well, if you have a drink in the cup holder and flip up the foot thrust, there's this big co-wang, like a recoil on a 12 gauge, and the vibration nearly knocks you out of your seat. Other than that, it's great. I'm selling it because it reminds me of my ex-boyfriend who bought it. Mm, so don't fill your drink too high and you'll be okay? Right. Actually, you know, maybe I'll keep it if I can find me a new boyfriend to sit in the other half of it. You know anybody? Well, this is not exactly Match.com here, but I'll keep my eyes open. I'm uh, unattached myself, but as a radio guy, I can barely support my apartment and my Yorkie. Oh, and a 12-year-old car that needs a new radiator. <laughs> so where can they call you, Stace? 922-4634. That's at my beauty shop here. Can't talk much unless you want to cut in color, so... Maybe after 7 p.m. is better. Plenty of time to talk then. All I need is a call. Well, all right. Thanks, Stacy. Like I always say, there's, no there's nothing could be finer than a slightly used recliner. We'll see if we can get you some calls. <laughs> on we go to the other line. Good morning. You're on bs &T. Hey, Jerry. This is Trace. You know, the boat guy. Yeah, Trace. Uh, let's see, a 16-foot fish and ski boat with a 150-horse Evinroot. Man, you got a good memory. I haven't talked to you for a while. Anyway, it's still for sale. Got a live well, fish finder, skis, life jackets, you name it. Trouble is, I'm always on the road for work, and I can't use it. Not supposed to make personal calls on the company phone, so here's the deal. I live off the alley over on 14th and Vernon. The boat's just sitting there, and it's chained down pretty good. So don't think you can just back up the trailer and trailer it away. I'll leave a coffee can nailed to my back fence. You can leave your name, number, and bid in the can. Come by and take a look. Well, that's a different sales pitch. Don't think we've ever had a deal like that. Yeah, it's kind of different, I suppose. I just got tired of all these guys saying they're going to show up and then don't. 
So I guess I figure this should separate the serious guys from the looky loos. It's a good boat, but I'm not gonna give it away. So put your bid in the can, man, and maybe we can do a deal. Call me at 922-1861. Gotcha. Okay, there you go, a good boat. At least it sounds good, so run by and check it out. I had one myself years ago when I lived here. We called it Sink or Swim. <laughs> anyway, like he says, leave your bed and contact info in the coffee can. And I might run by and drop one off myself. Hey, there might be a book in this. The little can that could. All right, who's on line three? Good morning, BS and Pete. Are you finally ready to talk to me? I've been trying now for about 20 minutes. Good morning, Merle. Always a pleasure to talk with you, my dear. You know, we do have other callers. You just gotta be quicker on the draw. Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, anyway, I have two vacuum sweepers for sale. One's a Bissell and one's a Eureka. The Bissell doesn't do too good on carpet, but the attachment tools are great. Eureka does good on carpet, but I lost a tool somewhere. Riley! Did you find those tools in the back closet yet? Yeah, for the Eureka! I don't know what you're talking about. I said the Eureka, as in your re -a. <laughs> That man could have found his head if it wasn't tied on. Easy, Merle. Calm down. He's doing the best he can. Aw, uh, he can't help it. He's got challenges. Challenges? Yeah, being himself. That's the main one. <laughs> oh, hey, you think that guy Trace's boat was any good? Well, I don't know. I haven't seen it. I know he sold some other stuff on the show that people said was pretty good. You were looking for a boat, Merle? I don't know, maybe. Ronnie used to have a flat bottom boat for hunting. <laughs> of course, he ain't got a flat bottom no more. <laughs> hey, you know what I should do? Okay, I'll fight. What should you do? I should nail a coffee can to my back fence with a picture of Ronnie on it. You can make a bid on him and leave your number in the can. <laughs> oh, come on now, don't be goofy. If the bid's good enough, I'll throw in a vacuum sweeper. Maybe two. <laughs> okay, we'll make a note of that. Well, this is all funsy onesy Merley, but I gotta move on. Where can they call you? The usual number. I can't afford six different numbers like folks nowadays. 922-3494. Okay, good luck to you. Gotta move on now. Okay, okay. Have you found those two? Where's a coffee can? I need a coffee can. Goodbye now. Be kind to each other. Ah, uh, yes, friends. Another episode in the life of Merle. Okay, last call on the show for today. Good morning. What can we do for you? Is this that buy and sell deal? You are correct, sir. What you got for us? Only have a minute left. <laughs> hey, I hear an engine. You out on the tractor? Yep, just doing field work. Got two things for sale today. Uh, quickly, quickly. A ton of manure and a trombone. <laughs> You're joking me, right? Nope, all true, man. Call 9247330. <laughs> it may smell, but I bet it sells. Thanks, everyone, for keeping me abnormal. See you tomorrow. Hello. Hey, Stacy. How are you doing tonight? I'm calling after seven, like you said. I know that voice anywhere. Hi, Jerry. Well, this is a first. I've never talked to you for real before. You need a decent haircut? You're never gonna look hot if you have those guys down at Clip Barn cutting your hair. <laughs> well, I... <laughs> I was just wondering about the recliner. You you probably already sold it. Uh, well, no. I got a couple calls from some tentatives. You know what Trace calls looky lose. They might come by or they might not. And I just got off the phone with Trace himself. Trace? Is he looking for a double recliner? Oh, uh, well, he might be looking for a recliner. <laughs> well, maybe a girlfriend to recline with. We got to talking. He's single, 26 years old, got a good job. Seems really nice. 26 is too young for me, though. I'm nearly 40 now. I like a guy who knows the world, you know? Kind of the same way I do. Yeah, I can relate to that. I like being with someone who remembers the same music I remember. <laughs> Amen to that, brother. 
I've dated a lot of guys, but never pulled the trigger on marriage. How about you? Yeah, I was married for four years, a long time ago. We had a kid, a boy, but I lost custody. My own fault, drinking and partying around with my buddies. I haven't seen either of them for like 20 plus years. I tried tracking down my son one time, but no luck. But I'd like to see him, see how he turned out. Well, sure. Oh, I feel sorry for you. That's hard when someone just ups and disappears. Maybe he'll turn up someday. Hey, not to change the subject, but did you know we've met before? I was at one of your public appearances. Really? Well, thanks for coming. Where was I? Oh, you were at that supermarket opening. We talked a little. I was the blonde who won the $100 gift certificate in the drawing. Oh, sure. I remember you. You said you were going to get some champagne, steak, and dog food with the money. <laughs> yes, and I did too. The champagne was for my girls at the shop who worked all overtime at this big wedding party. About two dozen gals in the wedding and they all wanted something different. Lots of hair on the floor that day. So your shop's doing pretty well, I take it. Yeah, sure is. It's been growing well, like hair. I need some help with the books and all the federal and state paperwork, though. I'm getting behind and it's a hassle. Oh, well, I took some accounting courses in college and I worked part-time at H&R Block for a couple years before going back to radio. Uh, I could help you out. Uh, let's see, uh, two and two still equals five, doesn't it? <laughs> wow, well, I hope you're better than that. Well, maybe we could, maybe you could come by on the weekend and take a look at the books. But I warn you, they're a mess. Messes are my specialty. I'll just bring one of Merle's vacuums and a calculator and we'll clean up that mess. Maybe we could work out a trade deal. My double recliner for you keeping me out of the IRS jail. Hey, just between the two of us, what do you think about that crazy lady on your show? Merle? Oh, she's goofy, but harmless. She actually kind of brightens up the show. She even got us a new sponsor, Bomb's Furniture. They have the radio on in the store all the time, and they say all the customers love Merle. The same, they signed up for a two-year ad package. Did you know she used to teach at the university? She's brilliant, but she had some kind of a breakdown a few years ago, so they medically retired her. She acts silly, but she's amazingly smart. At least that's what people tell me. You know beauty shocks. Really? That's pretty cool. Yeah, you never know it from the way she talks. That gives old Ronnie hell. Well, I like how you treat her nice and respectful. <coughs> that's a good sign in a guy. Some other guy might just cut her off and go on to the next call. Oh, I've been tempted sometimes, but really, she's easy to take. And it helps the show to have one or two callers that are a little, you know, off-center. <laughs> hey, I, uh, I better get off here and hit the sack. I roll out at 4 in the morning so I can get to the station and get everything set up by 5.30 or so. Yikes, 4 in the morning? You don't have much time for a nightlife, do you? So, did you want to see the recliner? Oh my god, yeah, sure. Okay, uh, today is what, Wednesday? Uh, how about Friday evening after you close up shop? You got it, it's a date. Well, I mean, not a, a date date, but like, yeah, yeah, you can, you can come see it. Just call me at the same number to make sure I'm home. Okay, see you then. Don't sell the trace before then, okay? All right, but you better be a serious buyer, buddy. Hey, by the way, Trace says he thinks he knows you from somewhere. Huh. I don't have a clue. I met a lot of people in this business. Well, have a good night, Stacy. It's been fun talking with you. Same here. We'll talk again in a couple days. Night. Remember, that's Nick's Pawn Shop and Artistic Tattoo Salon at 8th and May. You're gonna love the skin you're in when Nick's done with you. Anything from a butterfly on your butt to a life-changing full-body makeover, it's Nick. The man who thinks before he inks. Okay, back to the biz here. Our number is 920-2121. Those numbers are available on the most modern phones.
Got one line open, so grab it before someone else does. Good morning, BS and T. Hey, this is Jeff. How you doing, Jerry? Yeah, as well as I can with the limited resources available to me. What do you have for us today, Jeff? Well, I got a pickup for sale. It's a 2003 Ford F-150. It's a really nice truck. It has four-wheel drive, crew cab, and lots of nice extras. Mmm, sounds good. Anything else you want to tell us? It has a little problem, you know, it, it needs an engine. But everything else is fine. It's a big truck. No. All right, good truck just needs an engine. What's your number, Jeff? That'll be 924-1983. Call after 5 p.m. because I, uh, I got to meet my parole officer today at 4. Um, yeah. Gotcha. Good luck, man. And we move on. Good morning. What can we help you with today? Well, I've got one vacuum cleaner. This guy from Rosdale bought the Bissell. Hey, good news, Merle. We love those success stories. So you still have the Eureka, huh? Yeah, that's one where I can't find the tools for it yet. Roddy! Roddy! <laughs> Did you find those tools yet for the Eureka cleaner? Well, no, I didn't. I can't get that man to do anything. You know he's disabled? Uh, no, sorry. What sort of problem? He swallowed a toothpick. Just yesterday, he was flipping it around in his mouth, just showing off, and whoop, there it went, right down the windpipe. That sounds like something that would hurt. Oh, it did. Stuck halfway down his throat. Doctor had to shine one of those little baby cameras down in there and then pull it out with some tools. So he's hurting today. He can only eat soup for a few days. Now he's hanging around here looking sad because he can't bid on that Trace guy's boat. Oh, the coffee can deal? Why can't he bid on it? Because he cost us a thousand bucks over at the urgent care clinic, that's why. Sorry to hear that. Do you have health insurance? Yeah, but the deductible is so high, basically we're just covered for death. <laughs> anyway, back to the boat. I heard he's getting lots of bids on it. If you're interested, you better get over there. Someone told me he bought me leaving town. I guess his work is going to transfer him or some such. Okay, I guess I better get on that if I'm serious. Been thinking about it, I have to admit. Uh, good luck with the vacuum cleaner. Hope Ronnie feels better. Did he get some medicine for the pain? Yeah, over-the-counter stuff. Jack Daniels. <laughs> Hi, is this Trace? Oh, you're the guy on the radio. Good thing you called now. I just got in. Oh, good. Uh, sounds like you're really running and gunning at work. So, did you get some bids in the coffee can? Yeah, some pretty good ones. I'm going to have to move fast on this because the company wants to send me down south to work on one of their natural gas rigs in the Gulf. It's going to be a three-year deal. I bet you'd like that boat. I call her Sink or Swim. Well, that's a weird coincidence. Years ago, I had a boat with the same name. A lot of years ago. Well, hey, come on by right now. I got a few minutes. 14th and Vernon. Yes, sir. See you in a bit. Huh. Sink or swim. Good to meet you, man. I like to shove. Pretty funny sometimes. I like that old lady. What's her name? Myrtle? Uh, thanks. Yeah, they broke the mold when they made Merle. Uh, well, you were right. This looks like a nice boat. Just wish I could use it more. I moved up here for work and figured it would be fu fun to have a boat to go out on the lake. But all our Northwestern gas keeps me running. Plus, I'm on call on the weekends. Can't complain about the pay, though. So you moved up here. Where'd you live before? <laughs> Illinois. Not too far from Chicago. My mom was from Wisconsin, and she always wanted to go back there. Always talking about how pretty it was. My stepdad, well, he adopted me, so I guess that's my real dad. Ed Whitburn. He just wanted to stay put in Chicago, because he had a good job there. So your last name is Whitburn. Now your name Trace, is that your regular first name or a <coughs> nickname? Actually, it's a nickname. Most people don't know that. My dad always calls me Ace. Then he combined it with the first letters of my first of middle name, which are Thomas and Robert. So he came up with Trace, and it kind of stuck. So ever since grade school, I've been Trace. Do, do you remember what your mom's last name was before she married your dad? I might know her family. Uh, 
Yeah, Holloway. Um, Jeannie Holloway. Okay, well, I guess I don't know her. Uh, she grew up around here? Yeah, somewhere around here, but not right here in Bay City. I forget. Little bitty town. She married my birth dad somewhere around here, but I don't know anything about it. Uh, I kind of like to, though. Well, anyway, about the boat. If you want, I can crank it up the old Evan Road, and you can hear it. Got 150 horses. Sure, let them loose. be the recliner that you're selling, huh? The one and only. Trace was sitting in it, in it just the other night, but he didn't buy it. But we did go out for drinks in a movie. He's pretty cool, for a kid, I mean. Yeah, I got to meet him. It seems like a nice guy. His face is so familiar. He looks a lot like my ex-wife. I'd still like to find my son. It's been 23, 24 years. I just got the feeling he's around here somewhere, but I don't think Trace is the guy. His real first name, Thomas, is the same as my boy's, but so I asked him his mom's name, but it didn't ring any bells. That's gotta be hard. Missing out on all that growing up and all. Have you tried online? Some of those people finding sites are pretty good. I have, but no luck. Keep running into dead ends. I can't blame my ex. She wanted to be rid of me. I was just a party guy years ago. I think I've become a better person since then. Something will happen to you one of these days. I just got the feeling. So did you buy the boat? Uh, not yet. The price is right. Just need to find a way to fit it into my budget. He's leaving in about 10 days. Did you know that? Uh, yes, I, I did. I, I might be going with him. Really? Seriously? I thought younger guys didn't appeal to you. Uh, well, they don't. They really don't, but he's just so well grown up. He just seems older. He's been on his own since he was 18 and has had really good responsible jobs. Hey, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to drop everything here and close my business. I just want to go down for a week or so to see what it's like in the Gulf. Everybody raves about it. Yeah, it's all right. I worked at a station in Corpus Christi one time. Oh, that's neat. Oh, geez, I'm not being a very good host here. You want to be here or something? Yeah, that would be great. The recliner looks good. Got that fuzzy finish, just like you said. Uh, I need to think about it a little. Now, let's take a look at those books of yours. That gal wants. Oh well, I'll do my good deed for the day. Hey, Merle, what's up? The station's not live on the weekend, so I can't put you on the show. I know that, Mr. Jerry. I may be goofy, but I'm not dumb. I was just over by the coffee can man. Trace? What? Are you going to try to buy his boat too? I doubt it. I just felt sorry for old Ronnie here and thought I'd go over and put in a bid. Well, lo and behold, he was right out there shining up the side of his boat. I put our bid in the can and we got to talking. You've never had a problem talking, girl. <laughs> he said you came by last night. Says he feels like he knows you, but he can't figure out from where. Yeah, that's about right. Same here. He looks like my ex-wife. He told me her name, but it doesn't check out. I've got a son, should be around his age, 26 or 27. I haven't seen him since he was about two years old. She got sole custody, because I was a creep back then. He could be living around here. I'd like to find him, but no luck so far. Well, maybe I can help out. You've been pretty good to Ronnie and me, so I stole his Big Mac. You what? Stole his Big Mac from Ronnie? No, no. You know, you can be a little slow sometimes. I stole it from Trace. He was chowing down on a Big Mac when I got there, but then he tossed part of it away in his trash can. 
So when we got done talking, he went in the house. I grabbed that burger out of the can and popped it in one of my baggies. And whoop de doo I got you a ton of his DNA. <laughs> You carry baggies around. Yeah, I always have some in my purse so I can clean up after my dog Peaches. When we go walking, don't worry, there's nothing in that baggie except DNA. No doggy souvenirs if you get my drift. I don't get it. What does this have to do with me? I'll tell you what it has to do with you. You get me a sample of your DNA, just a cheap swap and I'll take it to my former staffers at the university and they'll run the test. It'd be good if we had his mom samples too, but it's not absolutely necessary. Results in about three or four days. Wow. Well, I guess the story was true. People tell me you were a professor over there years ago. Yes, sir. I was part of the first genetics lab in the state, but I developed a neurological problem and had to be medically retired. It's under control now. But the meds I take make me seem a little silly sometimes. So I just went with the flow and relaxed into good old Merle, the local crazy lady. <laughs> That's amazing. Is it true that you once called 911 because Ronnie wouldn't get you some donuts at Casey's? Yeah, that was before they got my meds adjusted. I'm on track now. Wow, I, I don't know what to say. Thanks for doing that, but I'm going to check with Trace to make sure it's okay with him. There's probably some law that says you need consent. Okay, just don't take too long. Ronnie's been eyeing that Big Mac in the fridge. <laughs> Merle stole my Big Mac? I would have bought her one if I had known she was hungry. <laughs> no, no, nothing like that. It turns out she's a retired genetics wizard from the university and knows we were wondering about each other. She wants to get our DNA tested. I'm willing, if you are. You look so much like my ex, it's almost freaky. I mean, in a good way. I don't know, Jerry, that's some serious stuff, but I remembered something yesterday that might help clear it up one way or another. I don't know what could be clearer than a DNA test. What can you mean? Well, remember when you asked what my mom's married name was before she married Mr. Whitburn, and I said Jeannie Holloway? Yeah, sure. Well, I forgot Holloway was her second husband's name. Her first married name was Irwin. That's me, buddy. You're my son. You're Tommy. Uh, Trace. The C. McCord has always just been my heir name. <laughs> this is crazy. This is seriously insane. I knew you seemed familiar somehow. Wow, this is a lot to take in, you know? And, and the Ginny thing threw me off too. The, my wife's name was Sandra Jean, but she never used her middle name. I always called her Sandy. The Genie must have come later. Well, whatever. I like the Trace thing. Well, Dad, jeez, it's weird to say that to someone else. Let me get you a beer and we'll talk about it. I'm not going to be pushy about the dad thing. Your dad is at Whitburn, just like you said when we first met. I'd like to meet him someday. But yeah, I'll take that in here. Well, here's the new beginnings. Trace, I won't see you for a while, but we can do that video chat thing. Stacy showed me how. And maybe I'll come down for a real visit. And Bring this one along. Sounds good to me. Sorry I can't make it down there now, Trace, but the shop is just too busy. And my part-time accountant here says he needs to untangle my books. Hey, no problem. I figured you two might hit it off just by listening to you on the radio. <laughs> and I'm going to be too busy out on a rig anyway. The girls down there will just have to wait. <laughs> Meantime, you're going to like that boat. Isn't that crazy? 25 years later, I've got another boat with the same name as my first one. Merle, take you out for a ride someday? I don't think so, but thanks anyway. I get seasick just looking at a glass of water. Maybe Ronnie would go. That's him now. Yeah, Ronnie, what's up? Can I have the rest of that Big Mac now? Oh. <laughs>
everyone. Today we're going to set these two up on a blind date. Their personalities seem perfect to each other, at least to me. I know a bit about them already. But they've never met, so let's see what happens. Still asleep at 11 a.m., college kids. Let's wake them up. <coughs> girl. What? A date where two people sit and talk and stuff? Or was it the girl part you were having trouble with? I guess my other date will just have to wait. Yeah, I guess the Gilmore girls will have to wait longingly for your return. I'll text you the details. Awesome. Bye. Bye. Okay. I just can't hold it in any longer. I'm too excited. Maybe if I tell her my dog died, I can back out of this. I, for the first time in many, many months, am going on a date. A blind date? I mean, when was the last time I heard of someone falling in love on a blind date? What if we fall in love? Okay, Swayze, you can't let me down. Not this time. <laughs> what if he's the one? What if she's the one? <laughs> now, I know what you all must be thinking. This is ridiculously savvy. Unfortunately, there's nothing I can do about that. I didn't write the show. <laughs> but let's try to get some insight into these young, naive humans' minds, shall we? Who are you? That, I'm afraid, is not important to the plot of the story. Is this a love story? And that would ruin the plot of the story. Now then, why do you want to find the one? Well, you see, Cinderella was 19 when she found her Prince Charming, which means I'm past the Disney age. <laughs> what? What? Well, you see, Snow White found her Prince Charming, when she was 14. Tiana and Cinderella, they were both 19. You do know you're talking about cartoons. Yes, <laughs> they're, they're great and, and we have love and, and now I'm too old to ever have a love like that. Are there any psych majors in the audience? <laughs> no? Hmm. I guess we'll go to undiagnosed. <laughs> well then, if not a Disney princess kind of love, but what kind of love are you looking for? Well, I guess what I had to say, I'd say I want a love that never grows old, one where we never fight, and we That's always impossible. read each other's thoughts. Also impossible. <laughs> I want a man who's strong, but not too strong, of course. Who's tall, but not too tall. Uh, who's nice, but, but, not, but you know, not nice all the time. Someone that will watch the fault my stars with me. I mean, you understand. I'm done with that one. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Homer. <laughs> Sorry, but there's no time for introductions. So, why do you want to find love? 
Well, have you ever heard an 80s love song? <laughs> okay, but what does that have to do with anything? Well, it has everything to do with it. Have you ever seen a boombox and your heart warms? No. The thought of getting caught out in the rain with Journey playing in the background? That just sounds really wet. The, no, no! I wanted a love song. Okay, but what does this have to do with why you Hold on, that's part. Done with that one, too. Thank you. I want, I want to never fight 80s love song. Blah, blah, blah. Can I vomit yet? Hey, we got some lines. deliver an important piece of information. What actually happened is the writer forgot to put it in till now, but wanted to blame me. So then, it seems we still have to suffer through these two's date. But first, we have to watch them get ready. Yeah. Oh crap, that crazy lady just reminded me. I've got nothing to wear. I've got to go to every shop in town and find something that says, I'm a princess. But also I haven't showered in a couple of days. And it's gotta scream, please love me. Okay, hair, check. Cologne, check. Now all I need to do is memorize every line from The Princess Bride. <laughs> oh, crap. Uh, maybe just the important parts. Hello again. Now, while we move into the third whatever scene of our one act play i want to let the audience in on a secret i the narrator do not hate love i actually quite adore the idea maybe if anyone had ever bothered to love me i might think it was possible i'll love you <laughs> maybe i'm okay by myself <laughs> Coming. Guess love's not meant to be after all. I can't believe I fell for this again. This well, like it wouldn't be a blind date if no one suffered at least Steve. a little. Next time I see Steve, I'm gonna take his little neck and bring him. Go, go, before he kills someone. <laughs> Bear, by the way. Um, Homer? Ruby? Hi. Hi? What is going on here? I mean, I told Sarah this guy could be meek, but he's tall enough to be in a freak show. <laughs> <laughs> but he's nice. <coughs> what did Steve think I wanted to marry? A fairy princess or something? Look at all that glitter. She loves love, though. <laughs> okay, I've got to mention it. Look at this kid's nose. I mean, somebody should name that thing because it's taller than Mount Everest. Are you kidding me? Wow. Those ears are huge. <laughs> You're clear for takeoff. <laughs> okay, I have to talk about the elephant in the room. The size of this kid's feet? Smaller than mine. I don't even know what to say. Her boobs! Oh. Are you kidding me? Alright, that's it. Opposite ends of the bench don't speak. Do not look at each other. I do not want to hear a peep. I want love. Ooh, ah. Oh. But when it falls at their feet, they're both too blind to even give it a chance. His feet? Her boobs? How are we all supposed to find love if we're all 
too judgmental to see it. I can't take this anymore. I quit. I'm done. I'm out of here. Great job. I can't believe I spent all that time getting ready. I've memorized every line from every love song I know. I, I just don't, don't understand, understand why I can't find love. Chess Championship. <laughs> Tonight we have two of our finest competitors competing, as they have both made the championship match the two years running. So this will be the tiebreaker, because <laughs> they're both now seniors. So let me introduce to you from Deerview Valley High, Miss Ellie Price. And from Green Boys Academy, Mr. Henry Potzer. Oh, okay, students, please shake hands. Take your seats. Oh, and let the match begin. <laughs> Ellie will start us off. What? moves first. <laughs> Upon starting out with bishops to d7 and e7 for Henry. Ellie is countering with knights to d2 and E2. <laughs> Henry moves his castle center stage A5. Still starting out the same way you did last year, huh? Did you not learn anything? All is all talk, aren't you, Henry? You don't know the tricks up my sleeve. Oh, Henry just had his kingside castle taken. Oh, this is going to be an interesting match, folks. Hey! That's not textbook. Oh, he's so cute when he's frustrated. Oh, Romeo. No, he's a prince. No, a knight willing to joust for my hand. I pray that we grow up with him. Mr. Mary Lust may lust follow you through this tournament today. Your Highness, I am honored. Man, this is your beautiful daughter for such love to me. My dear Ellie, today I battle the greatest knights of this land. May I have the honor of your favor for this tournament? But Sir Henry, all you need to do is ask. Please, take his handkerchief as a token of my favor and provide the luck for which you seek. With this token of your favor, I cannot be defeated. Skittles. 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 Skittles, are you going to move or just hang your arm there? You told me that again? And we'll see one of those rainbows. <laughs> I just took your castle with my bishop. That's the only way you get a castle. <laughs> she looks pretty today. I wonder if she likes hiking. <laughs> Here, let me help you. That's what we need, just ahead. Take this, this is amazing. And look at the view. I came across a spot off my dog one day, and it's a great view right about sunset. I didn't much to play wide, so I can't do simple with the sandwiches. Sandwiches are great. Thank 
I think you forgot something. What? I still have to make my move. <laughs> Can I take you out for ice cream to celebrate? Uh, as long as I can fix the place. Wait, wait, wait. Ah! Hey, Ellie. Hey, Henry. I, I haven't given you the trophy. It's not over yet. inside. Well, you told me that they were on vacation, but I think I see silhouettes through the window. Yes, sir. Sure, whatever I'm doing isn't ethical. I know that. However, my mother is very ill, and I don't have the money to pay for her hospital bills. No other job pays as good as this one. Hopefully those video games have taught me a thing or two. <laughs> You're grounded. But why? Uncle Thomas says I'm 18 and I can do whatever I want. When you live under my house, you live under my rules. But all of my friends are going out tonight. But you're grounded, so you're going nowhere. I'll call your tutor. I know it's late, but I think he could teach you a thing or two about respecting your parents. Oh. Why is it always about respecting parents? All they do is yell at you. Then what are you trying to justify yourself? They say you're back talking. Teen rebellion, please. All I wanted to do was hang out with a few friends. But before I can, I have to answer a million and one questions. What time? Whose house? Will their parents be home? What are their parents' names? What do they do for a living? Do they own a dog? What breed? If I get past all those questions, I can't even stay for more than an hour or two. Ugh. Hey, Kobe, it's me, Samuel Hall. Can you come in tonight? What? You're sick on a beautiful night like this? Yeah, Cubs, call your substitute, whatever they're called. Only if they teach as good as you, of course. All right, have a good night. I hope you feel better. very priceless. The most beautiful piece I've ever seen. Get out! But sir! I can't get out immediately, you see. The residents are moving about the house. As soon as I see an opening, I'll make a break for it. So, uh, you ready to learn some philosophy? <laughs> yeah. Trisha! In the living room! Do you have a bathroom? Thank you. Trisha, Colby can't come in tonight. Uh, but yeah, he might I... be sending the substitute in instead. Yeah, he's... Why are you always interrupting me? Patricia Hall, I'm your father. I wasn't. Now you raise your voice at me? What has gotten into you? I was trying to tell you my substitute is here. He's in the restroom. Oh. Well, he's 
foot. Is he gone? Yeah. Why? Are you trying to avoid him? Uh, a little bit. He's kind of intimidating. No, he's not. You just have to get comfortable around him. Hey, Wait, Dad. no, 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 don't call him, no. Okay. <laughs> Philosophy is the fundamental nature study of knowledge, reality, and existence, ex existence, especially when considered in the academic sense. Oh, hey, Hunter. His name is Victor. Yeah, my name's Victor. Victor? Yes, sir. May I see some ID, Victor? Victor Aguilar? Yes, sir. Patricia, can I speak with Mr. Aguilar alone, please? Why? Patricia? <coughs> what grade are you in? Uh, I'm a senior in high school. Oh. Yeah, Patricia also would have been a senior if she was at home school. All right. Does this belong to you? Uh, no. It's very cold out, sir. You probably accidentally left it. Coincidentally, you call it. Come on. See anything out of the ordinary here? Um, well, I do see a bunch of faces staring back at us. <laughs> Thank God it's not just me. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Please have a seat. I'd like to talk to you. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, what would you like to talk about? Take a look around my house. What do you see? Well, I Don't interrupt you, Mr. Aguilar. Yes, sir. You could say I've had a fair life, wouldn't you agree? Yes, Almost sir. too fair. When I was your age, I lost a loved one. My, uh, my father was a drinker. He drank all of his life. He would go to work every day, then come home and just start drinking. He had time to care for us little ones, because he claimed that putting a roof over our head and food on the table was just enough for us spoiled brats. <coughs> As usual, the mother forbade it, so they divorced when I was uh, in junior high. Middle school for you. Even though they divorced, he stayed relatively close but he always canceled plans, causing us heartache. My big sister grew to hate him. I don't blame her, but she always got mad at me every time I wanted to be with him because I loved him so. You could never break a certain admiration ship a son has for his father. And then, uh, senior year of high school, I got the call. Is this Samuel Hall? I regret to inform you that your, your father has cirrhosis of the liver. In other words, his liver gave out and there's nothing they can do about it. I was the only person on his emergency contact list. The only one. That's what led me to choose this career for Hey, Dad? Uh, uh, I'll, I'll be right back, Patricia. I'm going to stop by the, the liquor store. So, uh, philosophy. What do you know about it? A bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. Absolutely. Anything. Um, well, recently my, my boyfriend said he wanted to take a break. He said I, I never support him. Please don't tell anyone. I've, I've never told anyone this. Um, my boyfriend beat me. Over his break from college, he began to drink and drink. <laughs> And pretty soon he became an alcoholic. So every night he drank, he beat me. He even tried to choke me. And in the morning, when I would when I would tell him what happened, he would just say it was my fault. But that's not fair. I support him. I've always supported him. I love him. 
he beat you. Yes, but only when he was drunk. And you told him about it, and he still blamed you. Please don't tell my father. I wish I could promise something, but you're in an abusive relationship. Please, I'll do anything. No, look, I've seen these situations before, and if you don't get out now, it'll only get worse. What if he goes too far? Then what? But I love him so much. Even when he treats you like this? Well, he... What about me? <laughs> I can treat you better. Aww. You are the prettiest girl I have ever seen. And I know for a fact you deserve so much more. I don't know what to say. Well, I have something to say. I'm not a tutor. I came here in a ski mask to rob you. You see, my mother is very ill. So ill, in fact, that I resulted in stealing. But then I met you. And it wasn't about stealing anymore. It was about getting to know you. I see that look on your face. I'm not crazy. I really wish we could have met under different circumstances. I'm sorry. Uh, Dad. You better go after him. It's, it's a noble cause. The boy who do anything for his mother is worth going after. Hopkins, it's uh, Dr. Hall. You at the front desk? Can you look up a file for a uh, Mrs. Aguilar? I want you to clear all expenses up. Don't worry, it'll be an honor for me to pay for it. 